In the last video, we talked about the what or ventral pathway, which is based on descriptions and comprehension through language, and the where or dorsal pathway, which is based on spatio-temporal awareness through relational modeling. Our conscious experience is a recursive, self-referential loop that emerges when these two information streams are integrated into what Jordan Peterson calls a map of meaning. He describes this as a permanent but modifiable four-dimensional, spatial and temporal, representational model of the experiential field in its present and potential future manifestations. Some people call this inner space and the activity within it consciousness, but I prefer the term vision. Vision as conscious experience is frequently confused with sight because of how reliant we are as humans on the sensations that we receive from our eyes. The dominance that sight holds over vision may arise because sight is somewhat of a special sensation to us. This is because, unlike touch, taste, or hearing, which are all processed mostly on the opposite side of the brain, sight is equally distributed across both cortical hemispheres. For example, a touch on your right shoulder or a sound received by your right ear will be transmitted mostly to the left side of your brain by what are known as contralateral projections, nerve fibers that cross from one side of your body to the other as they run up and down your spinal cord. But unlike most of your senses, the receptive fields of your eyes are projected equally to both hemispheres. This makes our sight, the patterns of light that we receive from our eyes, intricately and powerfully linked to our vision, the internal representational model of the experiential field in its present and potential future manifestations. But there are two very specific examples that show us how sight and vision are actually distinct from one another. The first is a neurological condition known as blind sight. Blind sight is a fascinating disorder that occurs when the visual cortex is damaged. This part of our brain receives information from our eyes and other parts of our body to construct a representation of our visual field. When it is damaged, patients lose the ability to consciously perceive their visual fields. In essence, they become blind. However, it turns out that the visual cortex is not the only place in the brain that receives information from our eyes. It is simply an aspect of information processing that integrates optical input into conscious experience. Amazingly, the ocular pathways that project to other parts of our brain process information subconsciously, but are perfectly capable of informing and even controlling our behavior without our conscious awareness. So when the visual cortex is damaged, but the remaining optical nerve pathways are intact, patients only think that they are blind. In reality, they are perfectly capable of tracking laser pointers with their eyes, or walking through obstacle courses without any conscious awareness of what they are doing. Blind sight shows us that vision is not required for sight. In other words, a conscious, detailed map of the spatio-temporal relationships that we share with our surroundings is not required for our bodies to behave in an informed way. And we all know this at some level from the unconscious nature of reflexive actions, like ducking when something is hurtling towards us. This also shows us that the where or dorsal stream process of creating spatio-temporal relational models is not the same as the integrated process of vision or conscious experience, because these relational models are exactly how our bodies are responding to the unconscious stimuli in reflexive actions. It is only when we integrate this unconscious relational model with semantic descriptions that we get a mental image or conscious vision. And if we refer back to the model of the dorsal and ventral information streams, we can see that both of them originate from the visual cortex. Not only is vision unnecessary for sight, but sight is not required for vision. A beautiful example of this is human echolocation. You've probably heard of echolocation, which is when animals like bats and dolphins use sound waves as a kind of sonar to locate objects in their environments without seeing them. But amazingly, humans can perform echolocation too, and with great efficiency and accuracy. Echolocation shows us that sight is not required for vision. In other words, we do not need to receive any input of light through our eyes in order to be aware of the internal, detailed model of the spatio-temporal relationships we hold with our surroundings, the information we would normally get from sight. Daniel Kitsch, an echolocator that has been blind from birth, says it like this. You're essentially asking the environment, what are you and where are you, and you're receiving those answers. So you're getting an image and in your mind. Yes, I definitely get uh, 
three-dimensional images with depth and character and richness. And I can process those, and I can interact with those. We can also see this in people who have been blind from birth but do not echolocate. Congenitally blind people seem to have the same internal vision space as sighted people and echolocators. They dream visually and are able to draw as well, if not better, than sighted people who have their eyes closed. The only difference is that the blind tend to draw ears more frequently than people with sight do. Even without sight, we still perceive, and perception can be thought of as a process that is analogous to the ventral stream, or the what pathway because perception is the deconstruction of sensation in order to categorize details of our reality into a comprehensive framework, our identity or self. But in the sense that perception is related to the ventral stream, it is only one half of vision that represents the deconstructive aspect of our conscious experience. The process of relational modeling mediated by the dorsal pathway is the counterpart to this deconstructive process of perception. We call this creative process imagination, which, like sight, is frequently confused with vision. In the next video, we'll see how imagination is the force that runs counter to perception, and how the combination of the two is what produces our emergent conscious experience, or vision. Stay tuned for the next video in this series by subscribing to our channel, and please leave your input by liking and commenting. Thank you for watching The Paradox Perspective.